Okay, so um, before we covered this example of a tree and explained how if we wanted to minimize the cost of the paths from the root of the tree to the leaves, then we could do this by dividing the problem into smaller parts and then solving those iteratively from the top, from the leaves back to the root. Okay, so we could think of that as solving an optimization problem starting from the end of time at the leaves to the beginning of time at the root. Okay, so now what we're going to do is explain that same example in a more abstract setting. Okay, and by doing that we can then begin to think of how we could apply the same idea to different settings. Okay, so, so here we're going to give the definition of a dynamic program. Okay, we're going to let time be discrete from little t equals zero up to capital T. Okay, I'm going to let x of t be the state of the Markov chain at time t, and a of t be the action that we decide to take at time t. All right. Now, like before, what we find is once we've chosen an action, okay, from a given state, that determines where we're going to go next, okay. So, once, I've, once I'm in a state and I decide an action, then that determines where I'm going to go next, okay, through some function f, okay. This is called the Plant Equation. So we could think of us living in some big set of states, script x, then given we are where we are at time t, we take an action and the action could be to go left, could be go to right, could be to go up, could be to go down, okay, and then given the action that we take that determines where we next end up, all right, okay, and then we're going to consider sequences of actions over time, all right, so, in particular, a policy is a set of actions, one for each time, okay? And once we've taken an action, all right, we then are going to record the reward that we receive to taking that action. So we're going to let R of T of A of X, okay, be the reward that we receive for taking action A when we're in state X at time T, all right? And then at the final time, since there's no more actions that we can take, we'll just denote this by R of capital T of X, okay? Now the job of a dynamic program here is to maximize the sum of the rewards, okay? So we're gonna sum up all the rewards from time t up to and including time t. All right. So this is going to be our reward function. Okay. And we're going to maximize that subject to the constraints that the plant equation is satisfied. And then the parameters that we want to optimize over are the sets of actions. Okay. Now, a bit like before, we're going to like the idea of solving this optimization by splitting it and solving it backwards in time. And then in order to do this, we're going to let r of tau of a be our objective function here, but started from time tau instead of t. Okay? So here, r of tau of a, okay, is going to be the objective function where we do the sum from tau up until t minus 1, okay? And r of little r of t of x of t of a of t plus r of capital T of x of capital T, okay? And sometimes, just to make things a little bit more explicit, sometimes we'll also let denote on there the state that we started in as well. Okay, right, and again, we're going to let w of tau 
of a be the maximum over the sets of actions up until time t, okay, so that a of tau and the sets of actions that I can take from time tau onwards and we maximize our reward of that, okay? Right. So now we're going to improve one of the most important equations okay, in the idea of dynamic programming and extends out to all the different sorts of generalizations in ever so slightly different ways but the same basic proof idea remains the same. Okay, So let's go through that. So the idea is that I can write down the optimal reward as a maximization of the next reward plus the optimal reward from the next time onwards. Okay, So this is sort of saying if I optimize my next step Okay, I get receive a reward for that, and then I assume that I'm going to take the optimal choices from there on out. Okay. All right. So one of the key ideas, one of the key ideas we're going to use in this. So let's answer this. Is to note that the reward. Okay of being in state x, taking action tau, okay, so for the, let's say for sets of future actions tau, this is going to be equal to the instantaneous reward of the state that I'm in and the action that I take next, plus the rewards from after time tau. Okay, so this is because we notice that this, we can split this sum into two parts. We just include one term in this sum, and then what we've got left is r of tau plus 1. Okay, right. So now let's let a bar of t, okay, b, again, the vector of actions up until time capital T. We're going to maximize, we know that, sorry, wt is the maximum over all of these actions of the sum of the rewards from that state x, given the all actions I'm going to take from there on after. Okay. All right. Now we're going to split this up. The first thing I can note is that this maximization here, okay, is exactly the same as doing two maximizations. And when I maximize over the first action, and then I maximize over all subse subsequent actions. Okay? And then next, I'm going to use my formula here. Okay, so I'm just substituting in this expression. It's going to extend all the way up to there. Okay. Oops. <laughs> Just fix them back in. All right. So now what can we notice? Well, we can begin to see that actually, if I look at the sets of variables that I'm maximizing over here, once I fixed this action, A of T, there's nothing else I can do to change this reward here. Okay? 
So in terms of all of these variables, this reward at time t is a constant. Okay? These can affect the future rewards, but they can't do anything about this present reward at time t. In other words, what I can do is I can take this maximization and move it over here. Okay, so let's do that. So just write down the same expression as before. But now, maximization at time t plus 1 sits next to the reward at time t plus 1. Right. Okay. And now what I can notice is I've got something that's exactly the same as what wt is equal to, but instead of being at time t, it's at time t plus 1. All right. So this guy here is really wt plus 1, sorry, let me tidy that up a bit, wt plus 1 time at state x of t plus 1, all right? So I then arrive at the expression that I wanted at the beginning, that this is the maximum over the action that I take next, plus the reward I get if I was to take the optimal action thereafter. Okay? So begin to understand why this expression is the way it is. It's that the action that I take now affects this reward, but the actions that I take after don't affect this reward, and so I can optimize those. those. Right? And that's where this idea of this backward induction goes. I can optimize the action at time t minus 1. Then once I've done that, I can optimize the action at time t minus 2 and, that, and thus work my way backwards. Okay, So what this optimization at the top has, okay, this dynamic program optimization has, is a kind of form of separability where certain variables okay, do not affect each other. And so I can optimize part of the system subject to the other variables remaining fixed. Okay. Okay, so in a second we'll do an example of that.